today on CityCast Denver. The results of RTD's Zero Fare for Better Air program are in, and things are looking good? Me and producer Paul Caroli are talking about Governor Polis, transit, bagels, and ahead of next month's election, we're surveying the wildest political shenanigans going down in the suburbs. Today is Tuesday, October 24th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. I had something I was going to tell you. Oh, I went to Call Your Mother, the new bagel place. Oh, my God. I want to know what you think about that, because I just have to say from the exterior, it's very off-putting. It's a little weird. They they kept the 7-Eleven stripes. Yes. And they kept inside, you can see there's still the 7-Eleven fridges where you used to go and grab a loose, you know, a Coke. That have been vacant for 20 years? I think so. I think so. I, they looked like the well, same they just to bo- me. It makes sense because they boarded it up. Yeah. It's not like they demolished the 7-Eleven. But it's, it's beautiful in there. I, I think they did a really nice job. Also, the bagels, I liked them. I liked them. Wow. Yeah. That is a hotter take than... That's a hot take, Paul. I don't know if bagels is my favorite thing. I mean, you should go. You should go for yourself. I will. I'm just not picky about bagels. So I like a, a bagel's a bagel to me. But I just wondered because I don't know. I, wa- I drove by and I was like, that is a lot of look. Yeah. It's a big the look. The 70s sort of like font thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Show up on Sunday morning. All of the young people that live in Capitol Hill just fell out of bed, hung over. Oh, There's no it, seating and either. It's like, it's very much a scene. That's perfect, though. Yeah, yeah. If I was still in my 20s in Capitol Hill, I would definitely go there. I would be there every week. Totally. And happy about it. Same. Just walking precariously, hung over down 13th, hoping you don't get run over. Mm-hmm. It's a pastime of everyone that's lived in Capitol Hill. <laughs> that's why those green barriers are there, right? Oh, yeah. The ones the along original builders. by wax. Tr- <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. By wax tracks where you're mm-hmm. like, don't tip over this drunk when you're at this. What is it? It's not the snake pit. Sorry. Your mom's house now. Mm-hmm. If you're sitting outside your mom's house. But yes, I smoked yeah. many cigarettes out of there. Uh, okay. Well, hi, Paul. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Here we are again. Here we are. We are. We're going to talk about Denver and then we're going to spread our wings a little bit. Talk about some of our favorite <laughs> surrounding suburbs. Because as we found... Mm-hmm. The drama there is as good oh as the drama God. here. Political drama, I should say. It's really Political good. Drama. I can't wait to get into it. Before we do that. Yes. Our first story, uh, our top story, the pandemonium on our streets, uh, as usual. <laughs> Paul's segment <laughs> from 60 Minutes, the pandemonium on our streets. Um, well, the biggest news story is breaking right now. I'm going to do it now to you, Bree. My wife, Megan, is now an e-bike rider. <gasps> Yeah. Congratulations, Megan. Yeah. We don't have to spend too much time on that, but it's it's changing up our transit habits for the better. Is it? Yeah, we biked to Cherry Cricket over the weekend. So nice. In Cherry Creek? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, you guys delivered. just take the path and then... Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. Um, but anyway, there is some real news. Uh, and uh, we really wanted to talk about this because last week, our governor, Jared Polis, dispensed some of his wisdom on a social media site now known as X. Uh, Bree... Do you, what did he what did he post? This is embarrassing. Yeah. Frankly, especially okay. for being the train freak that we know he is, which is a multi- like some trains. I guess. I mean, I took him for more of a transit pedestrian friendly person based on his interest in trains. But this tweet showed us something very different. Uh, Polis said during National Pedestrian Safety Month, the Colorado Department of Transportation and I want to remind everyone to use sidewalks whenever possible. Cross streets at designated crosswalks or intersections. Avoid distractions while crossing. Look out for cars entering or exiting. Uh, what? Yeah, what do you think? This is, again, it's so embarrassing. Avoid distractions while crossing. Mm-hmm. You know what kills pedestrians and distractions? Distracted drivers. Also, use sidewalks whenever possible. Could you put some sidewalks in whenever possible? Yeah, if only there was someone involved in this post who had the power to fund Build things sidewalks. like sidewalks. That would be that would be cool. But I mean, the Colorado Department of Transportation and the governor, two entities that could make sidewalks happen. I, I mean, I have to say I did enjoy the roasting that uh, mm-hmm. transit and bike and pedestrian advocates really gave him on Twitter over this because it's just a really embarrassing tweet. It's so not in tune with the conversation we're having right now about pedestrian safety. It's very condescending. 
it it's also, like written for children, I think. It's also written for people that are, are super into their cars and don't think of themselves outside of their cars as pedestrians. That's what it was speaking to to me. It's re- Well, it's reaffirming that argument that like pedestrians are just not paying attention or pedestrians are running through the crosswalk when they shouldn't be or you know what I mean? All these weird arguments that I see drivers make and I, I'm a driver myself. I mean, listeners know, but like it just felt like the absolutely most wrong take you should have on pedestrian safety and advocacy. What well, what's the take you would have liked to see from him? What are we doing to address transit issues where pedestrians we talk, where pedestrians are getting killed? I mean, we talk about this on the show a lot, Paul, the Vision Zero. Um the pledge. The pledge to sure. decrease oh my gosh, someone yelled at me on Twitter about how I said this. How do you say it? Traffic deaths. Traffic, it's about traffic deaths. About traffic deaths. And Vision Zero was supposed to eliminate traffic deaths by 2030. We have just seen them climb and climb and climb. So when our governor comes out and says this, it openly says to me, I am not cognizant or I refuse to be aware of the actual issue at hand, which is we are a car friendly, car centric place. And pedestrians don't have th- this is just I don't know. It was, I mean, it's not helpful. It's not helpful. It just, it's one of those bland posts that he does sometimes. And a lot of politicians do this. It's just like communication style. And I don't really know why they do it, but it's like super bland, like almost a PSA for the people who are just like waking up one morning from a 50 year slumber <laughs> to realize this, the world has changed. Like, by the way, don't walk across highways. I mean, now. it's, it's bland. Cars for, go fast. Right. It's, it's bland for some people, for other people. It's like, this is blasphemy that you would, put because ultimately it's putting the uh onus on the pedestrian which we right. know is just not the reality so bat thumbs down thumbs down for governor polis thumbs down governor polis um one other transit story here we got some numbers in from uh, rtd's big zero fare for better air promotion that yeah. was going on Program the last couple event. years so we had it this year for july and august right 2022 just for august and they expanded it this year. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm not going to read a bunch of numbers to you because we know that that can be boring. Links in the show notes. <laughs> there are links, links in the, in the show, show notes. notes. If you really want to dig into the data. But um, Denverite reported that overall ridership on RTD increased 10% during free fare summer. So it, by all accounts, it, it worked. Well, by I mean, this one way of looking at it. I right. mean, what is working in this case? I feel like, and I've said this every time we've talked about this zero fare for better air program. This was a program dreamed up by state lawmakers and they asked RTD to do it. So it is essentially, in my view, until we see data on whether or not the uh, ozone levels went down, whether or not this actually had an effect on our air, this was the state government asking RTD to throw a transit themed party and to host it on their buses. (laughs) But that being said- Paul? I'm open. To, I, I want to see this data. I, I still have an open mind. I will change my mind. Well, I I mean to sort of back to talk a little bit. Speak yeah. to what you're saying is um, RTD uh, surveyed folks riding the bus, and they said cost saving and environmental benefits were big reasons that they rode the bus. That's so, cool. I mean, that makes sense. I think it's something on folks' mind. Uh, interestingly, though, only a third of folks riding. We're getting to and from work. So this sort of begs the commuter question that we're yeah, constantly having. Mm-hmm. It needs to be about habit for this pu- public transit system to work for a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, I mean, to me, it's a cool thing. I hope we keep doing it. I I do hear you, though, that we need more data to understand if it's really changing things in terms yeah. of the environment. Um, there was this, this, this vague comment in Denverite about it that I want to know more about, which was RTD says about half of surveyed employees said Hmm. they thought free fare, the free fare initiative improved the transit environment. Interesting. But it didn't say more. And I want to know like what are employees seeing? Is it safer? Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. What changed? Well, yeah. I mean, more crowds. I mean, maybe it would be safer, just like more people, more eyes at more times of the day or just like a better morale, you know, people excited to be there and not paying for it. Yeah, I don't know. That that is curious. I think it's just the beginning of something that could be really big, and I I think of it also as uh, this year we also the pilot program to give uh, free RTD to students to all kids under eighteen. That was the that's the coolest thing that's come out of RTD and and this work in the last couple of years to me is creating opportunities for young people. 
Yeah, so that is great. We shall see. Yeah, we will see. And that, um, and we, uh, while we're here, maybe as a last uh, note here, we're just to wish State Senator Faith Winter, who yes. was one of the main leaders of the Zero Fare program, um, uh, a, a hasty recovery from her bike accident. Yeah. We're going to look forward to I hopefully hope okay. talking to her and following her work as the legislature gets back to work in the spring. Absolutely. Well, in the winter. Oh, hey, and one more thing before we go to the break. We looked up that free RTD program I mentioned, and it's actually available to anyone 19 and under, not 18. All right, and we're back. Uh, we've just had a few stories piling up of just bizarre, hilarious things going on in the suburbs. Thought we might run through a few of them. Um, where should we start? Let's start at Douglas County because I don't know. I am so fascinated by one. Douglas County in the way it operates. It is our most conservative south suburb for sure. Um, but w- what is the latest with Doug Co? Okay, the latest with Doug Co is uh, the the reporting comes to us from Colorado Community Media, um, and they've been following the school board election happening in Douglas County. There, like there's one happening in Denver. Um, the Doug Co school board is is currently controlled by conservatives. Um, some people might remember the 2021 fight over a potential recall. This board has been fighting over masks I, and the pandemic and secret and, meetings and. Yes. and- it yes. has been run the gamut of everything that you could possibly not realize a school board was involved in, <laughs> have been involved in in Douglas County. Truly, yes. Um, well, per the secret meetings note, that's the latest. Um, at a conservative candidate forum on October 4th, um, according to Colorado community media reporter McKenna Harford, I'm going to quote here from her story. Colorado community media can't report further on the event because reporter McKenna Harford was ejected after being told by organizer Mark Hampton that it was a private event and media wasn't invited. Apparently she saw otherwise online. Yeah, because she's a reporter and And she's paying attention. Yeah, Yeah, and she's trying to find out what's going on with candidates in a race where the public will be voting. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable to me. So yeah. this, but this is like, okay, so this is after what, what else is going on here? Yeah, I know you're alluding to, this is the last time we covered the Douglas yes. County school board on the show. About, uh, six months ago, there was this, uh, lawsuit, a series of lawsuits that came to a conclusion, um, over the, the firing of former superintendent Corey Wise, right. who was this big champion of like mask wearing in schools and sanity. Parents, yeah, sanity. It's a real, <laughs> pr- real supporter of sanity. But that put him in a logger heads with these conservative uh, yeah. board members and so there that's where the the first round of private discussions came from and there was this lawsuit and now douglas county school board and the the conservative majority have to pay eight hundred and thirty two thousand dollars to Corey wise for violating open meetings law Whoa. by by holding private discussions about how best to get rid of wise <laughs> right over just a reminder keeping kids safe in school by wearing masks during a pandemic. Again, another reason why we want McKenna Harford in the room as a reporter to find out what is going yeah, on. What are they cooking up next? I mean, if I was a voter in Douglas County, I'd want to know. Absolutely. So cheers to Harford trying to do that work. We will continue to follow this. Yeah, that was just like, it's bananas. Oh, you guys, you're, are, you had just had to pay out almost a million dollars for being too secret. And, and then you're kicking reporters out. To be see- it's like some yeah. people never learn. Yeah. You know? All right. Let's move on. Okay. Englewood. Coming a little closer into the city. Yeah. Englewood. There's been a recall effort happening in Englewood recently. Yeah. Some of the members of city council are recalled. Bree, what's what's happening? So basically two council members and the mayor were recalled over their support of greater residential density in the hopes oh. of addressing the affordability crisis, Paul. I, I know this story. You know, uh, Inglewood Herald reports that the mayor and city council members supported building more housing and people in Inglewood did not like that. A few people, a few, Just I'm to, guessing loud voices well, didn't like that. It's funny you say that because uh, that's kind of what the mayor's take was, was it was a very kind of low key comment he made where he said, well, we all need to keep an open mind that there are uh, many that aren't able to attend the meetings on Monday nights, their council meetings. So the opinions we hear frequently aren't the opinions of the majority of the citizens we serve. 
And I think we saw that play out with this recall election. Um, But what was interesting to me, too, was there was actually so this is a seven member legislative body, council and mayor. Okay. It was set to be a recall of four of those seven members. Uh, Councilwoman Cheryl Wink resigned as the recall was getting started. I imagine I don't know. I'm projecting if I was her, I probably looked at that and was like. I'm not doing this. I just spent years I just learning spent, about zoning so I could try to do this and, complicated thing with density. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I always say that city oh, council boy. is like the most underappreciated job in government because they do, they have to know so much about so many things. And zoning, we know it's a complicated it's a complicated mess. But at any rate, she stepped she stepped down before the recall. Paul, I mean, this is like NIMBY bingo. This is like not in my backyard, bingo. We've got people mad about multifamily housing possibly being built. ADUs. ADUs. I read a big part of this oh, was yeah. ADUs, which like when you legalize ADUs, it's not like everyone builds an ADU. They're Although not I wish that they would. popular. Yeah, maybe. To be I honest don't know. With you. I mean, it would be interesting if that happened. Um, but it's like maybe like five or so in a neighborhood. Like it's not that big a deal. And this is what they're mad about ADUs. Well, and ADUs are often built onto an existing structure like a garage. It's not like it doesn't already exist there. And if you're anti density, yeah. ADUs are the easiest way to add housing without adding a giant building that you don't like. But at any rate, yes, hmm. it was about ADUs, it was about multifamily housing zones. Uh, this ended up being about wa- wasting taxpayer dollars on a recall mm-hmm. that we found didn't change anything. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, that one I could see. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the recall went through. The numbers were some of them were close in these races, but none of the folks were recalled. Interesting. So what do you take from that when it comes to the core issue of density? I housing? think what I think what the mayor had said here was the most clear, which is we have loud voices that show up every Monday night at city council and they can often they have the time and the resources to run these recall campaigns. And the reality is a lot of working people don't have the time to do that. A lot of folks are just trying to live in Inglewood and, you know, yeah. live their lives and go to work and take their kids to school and do all of the things that they do. And like, it just takes a lot of energy to do something like a recall, especially over something like this. I mean, we're not talking about corruption. We're not talking about, you know, indecent behavior of a council person. We're talking about people disagreeing about whether or not we should try to build more housing so that Inglewood is more affordable. I got a question for you, Bree, about this. Sure. This is, it's such a local issue, this inf- asynchronous yeah. information problem. Uh, it strikes me that our governor Polis, who we've been talking about, he is working on this a very similar proposal to densify our urban areas across the state. Do you think we can learn anything from this Englewood recall effort about how it might be going for Polis or what he should be thinking about? Or I mean, I think you know he had that big housing bill and land use bill that yeah he tried to push through this year. It got a lot of pushback. But it's the beginning of the conversation, the public conversation that we have to keep having about housing. And so to me, this says Inglewood is down for it. I spend a lot of time in Inglewood. My gym was over there. I mean, I like it and I understand people want to live there and it's expensive. And so I just think that we are going to continue to see this conversation happen. It's going to be a tough uphill battle, but I think it is something that our governor is, is good at, is at least facing it and saying, Sorry, we have to continue to keep looking at building. Yeah, we got to build more. I wonder what he'll come up with uh, before the next session. How yeah. he's going to spin this one differently? Yeah, because last time didn't work, but it doesn't mean that people don't have an appetite for it. Yeah. So, okay, Paul, uh, our last check in here is all the way up in Fort Collins. Yes, yes. So and- not maybe super relevant to our Denver listeners, but this story is just. I mean, you should know what's happening. Yeah, what is going on? We had a listener reach out to us, right? Yeah, listener Jared R. alerted us to this. He's a Fort Collins resident, sent an email with the header, Fort Collins candidate has white supremacist ties. <gasps> Uh, so I read the Colorado an article that this is about and some of the other um, some of the other comments from people involved. City Council candidate Alexander Adams, um, there, was, there was an article. A reporter has looked into his past because of one of his opponents tweeting, Adams has been a part of white nationalist group The Groypers, advocates for permitless carries for firearms against the reg, red flag laws, and has written a blog that implies that black people have lower <gasps> IQs. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and Groypers, if you're not familiar, uh, no. according to the Anti-Defamation League, I wasn't familiar with I this I am not. I, yeah, I don't know this world. Um, but Groypers is, are a loose network of alt-right figures who are vocal supporters of white supremacist and America First podcaster Nick Fuentes. 
Weird. Who's been hanging out with Kanye West lately? Oh, maybe yeah. that's why I know. I saw his, his name. name in a uh, a headline week or so ago, a couple weeks. Yeah. So this guy's got some low key stuff going on and a little bit of a paper trail on the internet. A little bit, a little bit. It's also not that recent. Like it was three years ago that um, Adams was like a member of these groups and posting I mean, three these years things. Ago is and, not that long ago. Yeah, yeah, not really. I mean, he was an undergraduate then, and what he says. Yeah, is, what does um, he say? He says after all this came out, um, he's, he's a young guy. I mean, this he's an undergraduate in college. He says, um, quote, fundamentally what has caused my views to evolve since then is as I got a master's in public policy and as I continued to read academic research, the fact is most issues have a lot of nuance, he said. The more I've read, the more people I've talked to, the more hands I've shaken, the more life experience I've had, the more people I meet, the more nuanced, I guess, my views become. That's so real he totally toasty and not... Yeah. I don't. I didn't get anything. For, I didn't get. A, I disavow white supremacy. Oh, out of he that. does say that. He oh, okay. says he disavows it fully. He says he got sucked into a personality cut, and he strongly disavows all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which it's still something to look out for. I appreciate that a listener brought this to our attention, but um, wow. I mean, do you think? Would you? How do you think about that as a voter? I mean, a candidate three years ago espousing white supremacist views, and now wants to like. He'd have to do a hard one eighty in public for me to believe that he's truly changed yeah, and see what other groups he's now supporting and the work that he is doing in the community and the folks that he's working directly with would say to me how far he's come because you can say all you want, but if you're not backing that up with actions, I don't, I, I wouldn't vote for that person. Yeah. Absolutely not. I like that you're open to it. That's nice to hear. Well, because I mean, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt that they can change, but mm -hmm. you really have to do that deep work. And that doesn't just mean posing with people of color in a photo op on Instagram. I've seen that enough from local politicians here in Denver where I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. that that would be, that's what I'm saying is like, what is he actually doing? Yeah. Well, one thing he does want to do, and this is from his website is, uh, Quote, uh, we should not upzone single family neighborhoods through land use code changes like the land development code. Thought you might like that. Yeah. He's, he's a historic character of our communities guy. I, oh, a historic character of our communities. That is it's, it's very so important. coded yeah, to me. I know. Before we go, do we have? We do. What do we have? We, we have, have a something voicemail. from our listeners, right? We have a voicemail <gasps> from a listener. Oh, I'm excited. Hello, Bree. This is Jonah uh, from Littleton. I was just listening to your um, DIA burger scandal episode. Love the episode, but how are you going to leave us on a cliffhanger? I got to know this story behind McDonald's. I'll go first, I guess. I go into a McDonald's. I have a too tall of a van to uh, use their drive through And so I go in to make an order, but there's nobody there to take an order. They all say, use the uh, kiosk, which I don't know if I like those too much. So I end up walking away. I haven't been to a McDonald's ever since. That's kind of my own personal issue. But I'd love to know. What's yours? Jonah from Littleton. Thank you for calling. Jonah, I have also had this experience separate from my issue. But it is you walk into a, you walk into a McDonald's lobby these days and it's like a public restroom. Mm -hmm. Like that's the vibe. It's just all tile. They've taken out. All the tables are gone. They have a cup. They have some tables, but they've taken out the play area. They've taken out the self-serve soda. It's they've taken out any of the fun stuff that made yeah. McDonald's look, you know what I mean? Like the toys were displayed and like there was just like the sound. It's just like it's like being inside of a robot. It's mm -hmm. horrendous. My issue was I ordered on the mobile app. I went curbside, never came, went through the drive through. They were like, we don't know what you're talking about. You must come inside. And I was like, what do you mean? You're the same building. Why do I have to come inside? And they're like, you come inside, come inside. No one will help me. Three different fee people finally cycle through helping me. They have no idea what I'm talking about. They've never seen or heard of my order before. <laughs> it's not complicated, <laughs> folks. Then finally, someone gives me an order and my drink has a label on it with my order number and everything on it. So they've been messing with me. It was there. Oh, a whole hundred percent. Yeah. The okay. whole time they were just messing with me. <laughs> and I was like, this is an incredible grift McDonald's has come up with. So I'm with you. I... I am boycotting McDonald's. I'm done. You're boycotting McDonald's? I am. am. I've deleted the app. I know. Jeez. I know. So Call Wall Street. Yeah. This, this is important news. I mean, that with along with Starbucks. I haven't been to Starbucks in weeks. Wow. I'm a changed man, Paul. You are. Good for you. Look at me. I'm drinking my chai at home. I do have to go. Well, I'm not going to tell you where I go instead of McDonald's because it makes my mom mad. Well, Sorry, now Brooke. I have to know. 
She gets really, she does Chick fil A. She gets really mad about Chick fil A. Do they do good breakfast? It's no. okay. McDonald's is truly the best breakfast of all time. Yeah. But I had to give it up. It's good. So, and also In N Out. I'm also now an In N Out guy. Oh. You were so against In N Out when we went two I years ago. I understand it now. What is it? You got to eat it right then. The freshness. The freshness. Mm. And it's good and it's salty and it's quick. No, it's not quick. I lied. That's the hard thing about it. It takes forever. You got to wait. It's like a half day. My my best friend Casey and I, who's like a, she grew up in LA. Mm-hmm. So we go there on a Sunday and we, we're like, we got to designate an hour hmm. to sit in the car or stand in the line inside, but worth it. That's so nice, Jonah, I'd highly recommend in and out instead. <laughs> Um, thanks again for calling in, Jonah, and thanks for everyone who wrote in asking about uh, Bree's yes. McDonald's beef. That, that did, did prove to be quite uh, provocative. Glad we got to f- close the loop. Um, Bree, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, Paul. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute to tell Fort Collins City Council candidate Alexander Adams about us. Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you later. It looks like a, the cardboard cutout of Ben Shapiro.